Good evening, Golden Lion fans. Tim Stubbs, Carl Wimper. We are moments away from our opening kickoff here. UAPB in Alcorn State. The Braves come in 35-28 winner a week ago against Mississippi Valley. And UAPB, a heartbreaking one-point loss, 40-39 to Alabama State. Something's going to give this week 1-0 Alcorn, 0-1 UAPB. The Golden Lion set to receive the kickoff in their black tops and white bottoms, new jerseys. They broke out last week. Here's the opening kickoff, and it's going to be taken from the goal line by Johnson at the 10. Now a nice little cut at the 20 and up to about the 22-yard line. And that's where the Golden Lions will take over. And, Carl, now they really encourage the touchbacks in college football because of so many concussions and big hits going on that now on a touchback, you get it on the 25. I believe they started it last year. And on a play like that, you take it from the goal line. Of course, you have to run it out. But these days, if it's in the end zone, you might as well just take the touchback, start at the 25. Yeah, because so many injuries, especially on special teams, that happen, and that's one of the reasons why they uh, changed the rule. So here is Ben Anderson, threw for almost 300 yards, three touchdowns, one pick a week ago. Pretty solid ball game. Steps up in the pocket here. He's got a little running room, a little pump fake, and then he's going to be taken down at about the 27. Picks up about five yards on the quarterback keeper for Ben Anderson, but he played well last week. He certainly did, and Ben, is, uh, he's made a heck of improvement uh, since his red straight freshman year, and he's the leader of this Golden Line football team. Shotgun snap straight ahead. Jeremiah Young, strong running. He's got the first down over the 35 to the 36-yard line. And the Golden Lions will move the chains there, a gain of seven on the carry. I tell you, what, on that right side, you've got uh, you know, right tackle there, Keetrick Brown, the young man. That he's 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 pretty much becoming one of the anchors of the offensive line. They'll spread them out again here, five wide this time, no packs. Little pump fake, design draw straight ahead, 45, close to midfield, down to the 49-yard line, gain of 13, and another first down for the Golden Lions. Design draw and dual threat quarterback Ben Anderson as good as anybody in the conference. He's, he certainly is. And one thing about this UAPB offense. As a no huddle quick handoff straight ahead, gain of about four yards. Even Second though, down and six coming up. Tim, even though the Golden Lions lost last week 40 to 39, but they, offensively they were able to put up some points. And I'm sure Coach Coble is pleased with that, seeing the, off, the offensive output. Shotgun snap here to Anderson. Looking left, going to throw right over the middle. Nearly picked off incomplete. Intended for Equid. And coming in on the play for Alcorn State was number 19, Anthony Williams, Jr., a 5'10", sophomore safety out of Clinton, Mississippi. Broke on the ball, and he was reading Anderson's eyes that time and nearly picked it off. I tell you what, there is Eckwood. He's gotten off to a slow start, Tim. Teams are pretty much locking down on, on Eckwood, and he's he's due for a breakout game. Yes, he is. Saw that little tunnel screen last year, which is so effective, it's yet to get going. Going to throw it here. Going to go deep. Looking for Eckwood, and he overthrows him at the five. Had a step, but the ball was overthrown only where Eckwood could get it, and again, Anthony Williams on the coverage that time, and that was third down and six, so UAPB is going to have to punt it away here, and Tyler Strickland on to do so. So the Golden Lions got going there and then stalled at midfield, and they're going to have to punt it away. Back deep for Alcorn State is going to be to let George, junior receiver. Good snap, kicks away, nice kick here. Let's see if he's going to field it. He's going to let it go, and... It's going to go in the end zone for a touchback. And I'm sure they worked very hard on their special teams as it was the X factor and the difference in last week's ball game. Yeah, you certainly certainly was, Tim, with three mixed, missed extra points on the field goal. Could have very easily been a win for the Golden Lions. But, but they went back to the drawing board last week during practice. And according to Coach Coleman, they had an outstanding week of practice. And let's just see what happens here, uh, here in the first quarter. One thing that he stressed, when I say he, Coach Coleman stresses that the, they've got to get out to a better start. They, they were slow getting out of the blocks last week against Alabama State. Quarterback's going to be John Gibbs, Jr., a sophomore, 6'6", 193, tall, lanky quarterback. Arnold Walker, the senior running back. Gibbs throws it right, quick strike, gain of about seven, maybe eight yards. 
Jerian Harris on the stop as they got it to Ladarian Davis, sophomore receiver. A yeah, gain of eight on first down for yeah, the Braves. Gibbs came, uh, came out of Booker T. Washington High School there in, in Houston, Texas, uh, which is pretty much a hotbed of, of athletes, there, but he's a, a long, lanky kid. Little pistol formation. Walker takes it right side. First down. Jenkins the tackle for UAPB, but a gain of five and a first down for the Braves. A little flag on the field. Yep. Flag right at the 40-yard line, usually in the area of holding here. Let's see what we're going to have. It's going to be a personal foul. Face mask on UAPB. So a bad break there, and that's going to be a 15-yarder automatic first down. 12.44 to go here in the opening quarter. Just joining us, no score. UAPB and Alcorn State, the Golden Lions still in search of their first victory of the season. Gibbs Jr., he's in the shotgun, a little movement off the right side. Now they'll reset it here. High snap, throws right, complete, caught, gain of eight up to the UAPB 44-yard line. And right now Alcorn State moving the football. They scored 35 last week against a very good Valley defense. So this is a uh, pretty salty bunch of Braves here. They can move the ball. Well, Alcorn really hasn't had a problem putting up points this season. Uh, this, this is a very good football team, Tim. Fakes the handoff, looks right, little rollout, got a man complete. Tackle by Jenkins at the 35, but not before. Jordan Payne, a sophomore receiver, 6'1", 220, great size, picks up the first down as he was moving out in motion with space on the right side of the field there, and that's going to be a brave first down as they are at the UAPB 35 and moving the football. Again, keeping in there, they'll dump it off. Walker breaks a tackle, 30, 25, and close to another Alcorn State first down, and I believe he got it as they dump it off to Joe Price Jr. that time. I tell you what, Joel Green, the right defensive end there for the Golden Lions, really missed the tackle. Could have stopped the, the, the running back about six yards short. First and 10 on the 23. It's going to be a draw. Straight ahead to the 18-yard line. We'll stop him at the 19. Gain of about four, maybe five yards there. And that's Joe Price. They got him listed on the depth chart as a receiver. Only 5'9", 185, but he's ran it. Or he's lined up in the backfield, rather, on the last two plays. They tossed it to him, and then he ran it on the last one. Got a man in motion. High snap. Little end around reverse here. Trying to get to the edge, and he will not get there. Great stop in the open field that time by UAPB's Tavion Garrison. 5'11", 185, freshman, strong safety out of Little Rock Parkview. Made a nice open field tackle, brings up third and five. Yeah, he's a young man that Coach Coleman is really impressed with. Like I said, he, he really comes from a sound football program there in Little Rock Parkview. But he's one of those 38 freshmen on this UAPB football roster that's going to be a, a difference maker in, in the future. This is the largest freshman class that UAPB has had since the 2000, well, 10 years ago, since 2000. And, Three. Anthony Williams the third now in the backfield in motion. Wide open over the middle. Nice cut. Five in zone. Touchdown Alcorn State. Little crossing pattern right over the middle. And then he reversed field. Cut it up to the left side. And an easy touchdown for Tillette George. And just like that, Alcorn made it look easy. They're up 6 0, 10 0 3 to go first quarter. Yeah, you know, well, at that time there, Garrison just really missed the tackle there and allowed the receiver to get into the end zone. Extra point coming up here for Alcorn State as they score on their opening possession. Hayden McCraney on for the PAT. Kick is up and it is good. So 10.03 to go first quarter. Alcorn State, they strike early and they strike first. 7-0 Braves over the Golden Lions. UAPB to receive the kickoff when we return. 
Hi, my name is Danny Andre Burrell II, a senior here majoring in industrial technology, management, and applied engineering. I thought that I would be looking for a job at this point, but thanks to my mentor, Dr. Charles Colin at Career Services, I was able to obtain a position as an industrial engineer upon graduation. Danny worked hard in class from the beginning, obtaining three internships while on campus. UAPB can help prepare students like Danny for those same opportunities. UAPB prepared me. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark. We're just playing. We're just playing. I'm trying to get you out of here. Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. McCraney set to kick it away here for Alcorn. He'll kick it deep. Taken by Johnson at the two. Johnson, right side, now cuts it up the field. Got a little something here. Check that, that's Mitchell. Mitchell over the 30 and out at the 34. Two flags are down. And Andre Mitchell with a nice return, but hopefully this is not a hold or a block in the back here, and usually, usually it is. Mm. It's gonna be a holding penalty, and that time they Got number 86, DeAndre Curtis on the hold there, and that'll back UAPB up and negate that 30-yard return by Andre Mitchell. This Golden Lion broadcast on KUAP is sponsored in part by Arkansas A&M College Federal Credit Union, Arkansas Health Connector, and the Wellness Center at Robert F. Moorhead Middle School. First and 10, back at the 15, not a whole lot of room there. Gets up to about the 16-yard line. Short yardage. That's Jeremy Young, who's the you know, outstanding freshman running back there from, the, from Dollarway High School. He had a heck of a ball game last week, Tim. Yes, he did. They'll clear out the backfield here and uh, have a whole slew of receivers to work with. Stepping up in the pocket, Anderson needs some room, going to run out of problems. Looks for a block, gets down at the 21. He's able to at least pick up about four yards there. It's going to bring up third down and about four here for UAPB with 9-12 and counting in the opening quarter of play. 7-0, Alcorn State leading the Golden Lions as UAPB in search of their first win of the season. Got down 21-0 in the first quarter. A week ago against Alabama State, rallied and had a chance to win it and let it slip away at the end. Shotgun snap, looking right, throwing, got a man complete as C.J. Branch, the tight end up the 33-yard line and a first down for the Golden Lions, a gain of 12. Well, picking up first down is very important for this offensive unit because the defense, the defense unit, they're really thin up, up front. The, the, the offense, gonna, they're going to have to put together two, three, four first downs to get his defense a little a wrist here. No huddle attack here. Anderson will fake the handoff over the middle. It's Branch again to the 46-yard line, a gain of 12 again, and another first down for the Golden Lions. They fake the handoff to Jeremiah Young, and then a little quick strike right up the seam there, a little soft spot over the middle, and a nice job by Anderson, and they're really trying to get C.J. Branch involved more. He's a big guy, former quarterback at Watson Chapel, but he was more of a running style quarterback, so they know what he can do with the football in his hands, and he's got good hands. Well, he, he was moved to tight end two seasons ago, and Tim, he's made that transition very, very smoothly. He's really beefed up since his freshman year and put on about 20 pounds, and you know, despite, you know, he's, he's turning, he's developing to a pretty good Catcher. He can catch the football real well, but I think his greatest asset is his, his, his ability to block because he blocks real well. A timeout on the field here as we get ready to resume play. Uh, big high school day here, about 600, hopefully future Golden Lions uh, here today, Carl. Yeah, the Office of Recruitment has put together a high school day, and it's uh, we started around 4 o'clock. It's a big day for us. Fake the handoff, rolling to his left. Anderson trying to buy some time. Got a man wide open at the 40-yard line of Alcorn. Nice move. Look out from behind as they try to strip it. 
And Zip getting up to the 30-yard line. It's Ladarius Eckwood. <laughs> and Eckwood on the catch there. The front of it is the numbers on the front of his jersey is kind of hard to read. That's those new uniforms and those, those jerseys are. They look like Isaiah Ferguson there for. Check that it was Isaiah Ferguson. It, it, the one, the four, it's, you kind of see what I'm talking about? Yeah. The middle of it's kind of yeah. bunched up, and it's hard to read the front of that jersey. But a first down, nevertheless, for the Golden Lions at the Alcorn 30-yard line. Motion, handoff. Young spins off one man, battling for extra yardage. Going to pick up about two yards to the 28. Bring up second down and eight for the Golden Lions at the Alcorn 28. 7-15 and counting here in the game's opening quarter of play. Ben Anderson's got several receivers involved. Last week we saw Dexter Bryant. Brandon Kinsey has been very effective early on in the season. Isaiah Ferguson. Here's the little tunnel pass, and this time I believe it's Beverly. Breaks a tackle, fighting for extra yardage. Going to be about a yard or two shy of the first down, but he does pick up about five, maybe six. Well, Des Beverly is a possession-type receiver. He, he has good size, and, and you know, he's pretty tough to bring down. He's about 220 pounds. He's going to bring up uh, third and two here, Carl. It was Beverly on the catch. He'll check out of the ball game. Now they'll muscle up here with their power package. Short yardage situation. Third and two, play action. Going to throw it. They have a man open, but Anderson didn't see him. Now he's going to run it instead at the 20. First down at the 18-yard line out of bounds. That's a, that's a prime example, Tim, of being Anderson he uses his legs. He, 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 he makes very good decisions. He, he looked downfield, didn't see anything open. The smart thing to do is tuck the football underneath and, and pick up as much yard as you can running the football. He didn't see DeAndre Curtis kind of flaring off on the right side of the field there because he was under some duress. If he would have seen him, it probably would have been a touchdown, but he was able to tuck it, run it, and get the first down nevertheless at the 19-yard line. They're going to hand it off out of the eye here. Straight ahead, Jeremiah Young colliding for a short yardage, gain of about two as he slammed into number 50, Kenry Tolbert. And that'll bring up second down and eight. From the 17-yard line of Alcorn State as the Gold Lions trying to counter the Alcorn touchdown on their opening possession. Five and a half and counting here, first quarter. Seven-nothing Braves. The snap, handoff, Young left side. Not a lot there. Good job by Alcorn coming in from that defensive back position to make the tackle, Devin Francois. Makes a tackle and brings up third down and seven. Tim, it makes you wonder if the Golden Lions are really in four-down territory, you know, with the problems that they experienced last week on, 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 on the, with the kicking game. You just wonder if the Golden Lions are going to forego the field goal and maybe look at trying to pick up the first down or perhaps even get a touchdown. Shotgun here, no backs. Going to spread them out third and seven from the 17. Going to throw it left side of the end zone over the extended arms, incomplete, looking for Dexter Bryant. Had him open. Boy, they would have taken a teardrop to drop in there. Had a small little window, but Anderson left it where only his guy could get it. But it led him a little bit too far, so they will attempt a field goal from the left hash mark here. And it's going to be about a 33-yard attempt. So... Right off the bat, special teams going to be tested early on in this ball game. Half the field is shaded, half the field in the sun. This is the shaded part. Kick is up, nearly blocked. It's definitely long enough, and the kick is good. So that's a good sign early on as Tyler Strickland knocks in the three-pointer. It's 7-3 to three now, 4.34 to play. First quarter, the Golden Lions will kick it off when we return right after this. Timeout. those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. 
4.34 remaining here in the first quarter of play. 7-3, 33-yard field goal by Tyler Strickland moments ago. It's a good sign for UAPB as they had some problems a week ago with a couple of extra points and a punt. Really hurt the Golden Lions' chances of winning that ball game as they lost by one point in a thriller to Alabama State. Strickland line drive kick, kind of a squib kick, going to be taken by an up back at the 18-yard line. Nice tackle there in the open field by the Golden Lions. That was Brandon Kinsey. So first and 10 now for Alcorn. They'll take over at their own 22-yard line. 4.28 to play opening quarter. Tim Stubbs, Carl Wimper, 7-3 Alcorn with the lead and the football at their own 22. But, Tim, that field goal was real big for UAPB. It was. A lot of confidence there. Pistol formation, man in motion. Hand off, Williams, the third. Over the 30, gain of nine up to the 30, just shy of the 32, almost to first down. Actually going to say that he has enough. They have an Anthony Williams Jr. and Anthony Williams the third. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that'll be fun today. That last tackle was by Xavier Lofton. His name's been kind of quiet this season, Tim. Here's Williams the third, gets the edge. Nice cut back 40 into the second level, breaks a tackle all the way up to the UAPB 43-yard line. Big gain of about 25 on the carry for Anthony Williams the third. An impressive run and some missed tackles, but you got to give Williams some credit there. Hard running. No huddle attack. Gibbs looks left. Going to run it. And not going to get a whole lot up to about the 42-yard line. Good job there by the Golden Lions. Anthony Smith on the stop. Gain of two. I'll tell you what, this big offensive line that Alcorn State has is, is really anchored by Isaac Sampson. Tim, check this out. This kid is 6'5", 367 pounds. He's a sophomore out of Davidson, out of Mobile, Alabama. 367. He's a big one. They fake it. Going to throw it. Got a man open. The 25 and then four set of bounds at about the 24-yard line. They fake the handoff and a quick strike to Jordan Payne again. 220-pound receiver, almost built like a tight end there as he picks up big yardage. And again, Alcorn State just big chunks for each play as they are just continuing to move the ball right now at will. Yes, they are, Tim. And, and this, this defensive front for UAPB is very, very thin. The goal lines are still missing some players, but. Gibbs Jr. takes the snap. Design quarterback draw, and he's not going to be able to get out of the pocket there. As he was sacked, basically a loss. We're going to give him a loss of about two there. That was Troy yeah, Goss. Yeah, Troy Goss was able to keep him from getting out of the pocket on a design quarterback draw. Yeah, he's one of the mainstays there in the offensive line. Troy, he started every game with him since his freshman season. This kid is big and strong. Came out of a very good high school program in Shallow Christian up there in southwest, northeast, northwest Arkansas. Second down and 12. A little screen pass at the 30-yard line was dropped as they tried to get it to Brandon Vessel, 6'2", junior receiver out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Brings up third down and 12. And let's see if Monty Coleman wants to bring a little heat right here. They've been effective getting to Gibbs, Jr., but... A lot of little play actions, little misdirection plays, and have resulted in some open territory out in, in the flat and open space here for Alcorn. Movement on the right side. Ball is fumbled, and Gibbs Jr. is just going to have to eat it back at the 35. I tell you Looked what. like some movement off the right side, either a false start or an offsides, but they let it go. No, I don't see a flag out there. Do you? No, I don't see a flag. Yet. They're spotting the ball. The, the, the officials are looking at the players like, hey, this is where we spotted it. Why are you way up there? It's almost like Alcorn State thought they were going to blow it dead. And then there was no flag on the play. So fourth down and 20 coming up here. And UAPB maybe catches a, 
a break there. A mini break. That was, a, that was just a really a mix-up between quarterback Gibbs and his center. 135 and counting. McCraney set to kick it away here. Andre Mitchell back deep. They're going to take a delay a game, give him a little bit more room to kick this. Stops the clock at 131 here in the first. But that really helped UAPB because the, the Golden Lions didn't have the, the right personnel on the field for special teams. So Mitchell back at about the 11. McCraney set to kick it away here. High snap. Angles it right side. It's going to be close to the end zone. Let's see where it's going to bound, actually, in the back and out of the end zone. So a touchback for the Golden Lions. They'll take over at the 25, down 7-3. to three, But that time, got a couple of stops on third down and long and then get the ball back. But Alcorn definitely moving the football, and you can see they're a very talented team. Now they're very talented offensive ball club. They, like I said, they they put up 35 points last week against Mississippi Valley State, and that's a good defensive unit that Mississippi Valley State has. And I, I really feel like this is going to be a high-scoring game uh, simply because UAPB up front right now, Tim, they are lacking some of, the, some of their main players right now. And, and all corner really has the ability to score in the scoring. First and 10. Hand off, stretch right, running room, 30, 35. And a first down for the Golden Lions. That time they hand it off to Walter Ashley, the true freshman out of Pine Bluff High. What a career he had at Pine Bluff. And Miss Danita Ashley, of course, technical services at UAPB. Great family, great young man. I'm so excited. He's a Golden Lion. I tell you what, he put up some impressive numbers for the Zebras last season. Yes, he did. He's going to get it again here on the end of round. Bounces off a brave up to the 40, let's see, 38 yard line rather. And gains about three yards there. So going to get him more involved. And he's a guy that you can move around. He can catch it in the slot. You can put him in the backfield. He can play a little bit everywhere. I tell you what, the coach staff really loves this kid, Tim. He has great vision on the, on the football field. And those numbers he put up for the Pamela Zebras over his career, he had over 2,500 yards rushing and scored 24 touchdowns. Yeah, eye-popping numbers. Also a great return man. He'll be utilized, no question. They're going to do a little wheel route with him right here. They're trying to go to him and incomplete. They went up the left sideline, a little wheel route, but staying back on defense for Alcorn as one of their linebackers who saw it right away. Otherwise, that probably would have been a touchdown. So give credit there to Alcorn State. I believe that was number 39, Justin Williams, who was able to get back and pick up that little wheel route. So third down and seven. UAPB on their own 38. 17 seconds left here in the first. Seven to three, Alcorn. Shotgun, no backs. All day to throw it over the middle and throws it behind his intended receiver, Des Beverly, who slipped down on the play, but the ball was thrown behind him. A better throw, and it would have been a first down. It would have. So a rare miscue by Ben Anderson, who has really improved with his pocket passing. He really has. Yeah. And, and Tim, this field drains very, very well. You know, we Pamela had almost five inches oh. of rain <laughs> over the last 24 hours, and the field was pretty soaked, but it drains very well. Strickland on to kick it away. Some pressure here, nearly getting to him, but he's able to get it off. And a pretty decent kick as it's going to go right on the sideline and out of bounds all the way back to the 22-yard line of Alcorn. So all things considered, that worked out pretty well for the Golden Lions there. Four seconds left here in the first quarter of play. One more play left in the first, 7-3 to three Alcorn. And looked like we were going for another shootout. And then the team started to... Defense kind of caught up with the offense, started to settle down a little bit, but that's not to say this game won't be in the 30s before we're in the fourth quarter. And so far, this first quarter has been kind of like a uh, heavyweight fight. Uh, the, the first early rounds, the two teams are filling out each other. It's a, it's a difference in this week and last week because last week uh, the Golden Lions gave up 21 first quarter points. Yes, they did. Got behind the eight ball early, but they were able to rally and show their resiliency, battle back, had a chance to win it. Final play of the quarter here, handoff. 
Walker stacked up Jerian Harris. Now he'll get some help. Gain of about two on the play, and that's going to end the first quarter with the Alcorn State Braves leading UAPB by a score of 7-3. to three. We'll have the second quarter coming up for you right after this timeout. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. Back inside a beautiful Golden Lion Stadium. Carl, how about this weather? It was a monsoon the last two days, and a lot of credit. Uh, we're having some elevator problems here at the stadium, and you should have seen Randy Kelly out here yesterday. <laughs> and the pouring down rain, making those trips up and down the bleachers, just getting poured on uh, to make this broadcast happen for you. So. He's a warrior. Uh, big ups He's a warrior. To, to Randy for that. And, uh, of course, today the weather's great. Elevator works. You know, that's just kind of how it works out. But uh, unbelievable weather. Yes. Just perfect. Could bottle this day up and have about 300 of these. There's a run here on first. Second down on first play of the second quarter. And getting up to about the 37-yard line and a first down. It looked like the big fullback there they were able to slip it to. Yeah, it was Alondra Young, he's six feet, 245 pounds, a junior from Baton Rouge, not far from. He was supposed to oh, play for Southern, right? Yeah, you're right about that. And off, nice cut back. Walker gets to the second level here, midfield, still on his feet all the way into the secondary, foot race, and finally taken down at the 30-yard line, but not before Walker rips off 25 yards and another big chunk of yardage for this high-powered Alcorn State offense. Yeah. No huddle attack, though keep applying pressure to UAPB, trying to get set on defense. Walker takes the handoff again. Counter right side and hit hard at the 29-yard line. Picks up about three. They're trying to keep UAPB off guard as Anthony Antonio Jenkins, rather. Boy, he had a great game last week, and he's filling some voids. Still not all the, the full team back for UAPB, but he's really stepped up. He really is. It's going to bring up second down and seven for the Braves. They're at the goal line, 29, driving here, leading 7-3 over UAPB, 13.50 to play. Second quarter. Zone read. Gibbs Jr. keeps it, slides down at the 20, picks up another first down. For Alcorn, they're going to give him the 21-yard line, but a gain of eight and another first. Well, those first quarter stats, Tim, uh, pretty evenly match. Uh, Alcorn had 106 total yards. UAPB had 112. Looking left, locking in on his receivers. And meanwhile, UAPB locking in. Antonio, or check that, that is Xavier Lofton coming in for the sack. You have to credit and Joel, also, yeah, Joel go Green. You have to credit Joel Green. Joel Green. Really and, standing them up. And Lofton was able to bring him down in a loss of two on the play, second down and 12. Well, he really locked in on the left side of the field there and kind of took his time. Meanwhile, Green and Lofton were coming. Second down and 12. Price in motion over the middle. Now looking right, got a man open in the right flat, 10 yard line out of bounds at the nine. Going to set up first and goal for Alcorn as they were able to dump it to, to let George. A flag on the field and maybe a hold right here, trying to give George a little extra room. Hopefully, not a face mask. We've seen too many of those lately. Numbers pretty even there in that first quarter. That's big. That negates a first down and goal. As we look over into the coach's booth just to the right of us here, and boy, they're shaking their head and yeah, not very happy about that play. 
you know, Charles Hughes, a wide receiver, a freshman out of Maker, Mississippi, that uh, had a hole and it was really not even, wouldn't have even affected the play. Yeah, those, those are the kind of yeah. penalties, Tim, that just they hurt. drive you nuts. No question. No question about it. Anthony Williams, the third back in there, along with Joe Price. Split backfield. Pistol handoff. Going to be Williams. No, it's an option pitch to Price. And Price is going to be slung backwards. And now a host of Golden Lions take him down at the 20. But getting to the edge was Kevin Rucker, Jr., making a nice open field play. He didn't make the tackle, but he slung him backwards until the cavalry came. Well, you know, and Kevin Rucker, you know, he's the kind of kid that uh, he's been a steady ball player for the Golden Lions. He's a 5'11", 195 pound. He's a red shirt sophomore. He's out of, out of Bell, Oklahoma, Tim. Third down and nine from the 20. Movement up front. Could be a free play. Offsides on UAPB. Out of bounds at the 14-yard line and shy of the first down as they got it to to let George. And let's, let's see what they're going to call here. The, Alcorn's already up to the line ready to run a play, but there's a penalty here. So they're going to have to slow down. Jonathan Watson, the young man who's a true freshman at Little Rock Central. I saw Jonathan yesterday at lunch. Uh, it's a big kid, too. He's He's... he's a very smart kid also, but he's getting quite a bit of playing time because of that depleted defensive front that UAPB has. This kid is 6'1", 370 pounds. Offsides, that was Caleb Ely. So replay third down, third and three now from the 15. Shotgun snap here, Gibbs. He keeps it. Fakes the handoff. He's got it at the 10. Slides down at the 9-yard line. He'll pick up the first down. Boy, he really faked out the defender there. And he just <laughs> sticks it in your stomach. And literally, in the 11th hour, he's either going to pull it out or he's going to hand it off at the last second. And a lot of times, it causes some fumbles and some confusion. That's plays you have to be comfortable with. And you have to have a lot of reps and practice with that. Yeah, one thing about it, Gibbs is six foot six. You don't use the fine kids that tall, especially a quarterback, can run as, as, as shifty as he can. Change of direction. Very quick for his height. Hand off Williams the third to the nine yard line, about a half yard gain, and that's it. So second down and goal from from the nine, 10-25 and counting. Second quarter, 7-3 all corn leading UAPB. I tell you what, but Alcorn runs the football team. Like I said, they, they like to go behind Sampson. And he, I tell you, this kid is big, you know, 6'5", 367 pounds, and he's only a sophomore. Anthony Williams, the third, just to the left of Gibbs Jr. Takes the shotgun snap, looks right now over the middle, intercepted in the end zone. Joel Green picked off. Our TQ Mims beg my pardon, please. As Mims stepped up, picked it off, and probably could have just taken a knee in the end zone and would have got it out, but instincts kind of take over, and you get all hyped up, and you want to take it back 100 yards. And so he is tackled at the five. If he could do it over again, he would probably take a knee there. But, hey, we'll take the interception, right? Uh, you're right about that. Mims is a red straight senior. I'll tell you what, and Tim, he was recruited as a free safety out of Midland High School there in Midland, Louisiana. He was switched to quarterback doing the drills back in April, but he has moved back to safety in the preseason drills in August. And one thing about it, this kid, TQ, has, he has good speed, too. Going to have Branch here as the fullback straight ahead. Boy, he blew up his guy right up the middle and yardage to the 10, five-yard gain. And they're using Branch in a lot of different capacities as the tight end. That time, well, he does look like a fullback. I tell you, he's a big kid. He's about 260 pounds, but he's a, he can play on multiple two of the positions. He's also the deep snapper also. So he's a deep snapper. He can play quarterback, tight end, fullback. He's, he's a Swiss Army knife. Yeah. <laughs> he's a utility guy, to say the least. Does a little bit of everything and does it well. Hand off, running room, 15, blasting his way to the 20. Stood up there, first down for the Golden Lions. 
Nice run there off the left side. Raylan Willis, a freshman from Wynn, Arkansas, but that's where he is from, but he played at Forest City. Yeah, he's 218 pounds, a heck of a kid. And when you look at these freshman backs that UAPB's got, it's going to be, they're going to, they have a bright future. Shotgun snap, they'll give it to Young, trying to get to the edge. The freshman from Dalloway lowers his shoulder and picks up three blue collar yards off the right side, brings up second down and seven. You know, we got high school day here. We got a lot of folks here from Camden High School. I know they came to see Jamie Smith, but Jamie got that stinger last week, and uh, he's a good looking freshman running back, but I doubt if we see Jamie in today's ball game. Probably not. Play action in trouble. Anderson finds some space, thinking about throwing it. Now he's going to run it, and he fumbled it out of bounds, and he lost a couple of yards by doing so as he fumbled it backwards at the 24-yard line. He ran at it about the 26, but he dropped the groceries, and luckily it went out of bounds, but it's going to be basically a no gain, maybe a gain of one on the play. So... A bad break, but kind of a good break because yeah. luckily he was on the sideline or he would have lost the football there and turned it over. Brings up third and six. Ideally, UAPB needs one more first down here, Tim, to get his defensive unit a, a break here because they've, they've been on the field quite a bit. Jeremiah Young just to the right and timeout called here by Ben Anderson. 8.05 to go. We'll keep it here. And Carl? Tell me something good about UAPB, bud. Well, I don't know where you want me to start, because I can talk about so many things that's good about UAPB. At the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, the 18 to 1 student-faculty ratio makes it possible to maintain a learning environment in which there is a close interaction between students and faculty. The UAPB legacy is strong, so are the countless success stories of its students. Without a doubt, UAPB students receive a quality education with a personal touch. And Tim, like I said, we, we have, I might say we, the Office of Recruitment, hosted about nearly 500 high school seniors today from throughout the state, and, and we had a group to come. A, a bus loader came in from Lake Providence, Louisiana, and they came down to see Eric Thomas, uh, okay. who, who plays tight end wide receiver for the Golden Lions. But uh, it's been a fun day. We gave them a, a brief campus tour, had a tailgate for them outside the stadium, and they enjoyed that, and they really enjoyed uh, listen to the marching band march in. Well, I was right behind them coming in today. <laughs> they sounded great. Third down and six. They'll spread them out here. Going to throw it, and Anderson's going to be sacked. Anderson taken down back at the 16-yard line. Quentin Cantu, a defensive back, came in there on a little late blitz and was able to get to Anderson who was looking to go deep there. Boy, if he could have found something shorter, dumped it off, they could have had a big play because Alcorn was bringing some heat. Yeah, they were. In. So going to have to punt it away here. Strickland boots it away. He's hit. That could be a penalty, and there it is. That's going to be a personal foul and a first down as it's going to roll dead at the Alcorn 43, and Strickland, hopefully he's just selling it but he's slow to get up. But there is a flag, and that's not going to be running into the kicker. That should be roughing the kicker. If it's running into the kicker, you know, it's going to be just fourth and one. So this is a big call here. Running into or personal foul, Monty Coleman. They're trying to talk to him. You never like that. When they try to explain it to the head coach, that means it may be running into the kicker. So right. Let's see what, see what we're going to have here. Running into the kicker, mm. number 24, the return team. Yep. Five yard Running into the kicker down. instead of roughing the kicker. Alcorn dodges a big bullet there. That's questionable there, Tim. That, that's very questionable. Because from up top here, it looked like he clearly ran into the kicker. You know, usually it's if the Rough guy the just kind of bumps into him or rolls into him inadvertently. But when they dive for the ball and they undercut his leg, that usually goes as roughing the kicker. So fourth. Here's the kick. And taken by a, on a fair catch at midfield by Tavoris Doss. And check that, it was fourth and 14, not fourth and one. It, it was third and six on the previous play, and then the sack occurred. So it wasn't fourth and six. So 
my apologies there. 7.13 to go before halftime. UAPB's defense is playing a little bit better since that opening drive of the ball game, although Alcorn's still been moving the ball, but a big interception by TQ Mims in the end zone on the last drive. Threw a cold bucket of water on their drive, and 7-3 ball game. Now it looks like a defensive battle with 7-13 to go before halftime. Well, Alcorn State's not going to do anything fancy to them. What they're going to do is really line up and they, they have to run the football uh, with, with, the, with the outstanding tailbacks and, and the quarterback. So they aren't going to put the ball in the air too many times. Going to be a quarterback keeper on the zone read here. They fake the handoff to Walker and straight ahead. Gibbs Jr. gets some short yardage. Gain of about three there. Second down and seven. Pretty much the entire field now in the in the shade. Stadium lights are on here. Gorgeous evening. I tell you what, fall officially starts tomorrow, Tim, but today was every bit of a fall day. Oh, it was absolutely perfect. Should be a great night for football here as we approach the 7 o'clock hour. Going to be an option pitch right. Walker trying to get to the edge and taken down hard by Jerian Harris at the 42-yard line. Going to bring up third down and two for Alcorn, but a nice open field tackle there on the option pitch. Well, Jerian Harris, he's going to bring a low 6'1", 220 pounds. He's a senior. I tell you what, he caught the entire swag by surprise as a true freshman three years ago out of Arlington High School there in Arlington, Tennessee. He was the, he was the swag freshman defensive player of the year. Arlington, Arlington, Tennessee is just outside the city limits of Memphis. You would know. Yeah. You gotta know go. where every town <laughs> in America is. Got to go there in, in a couple weeks. They fake the pass left. Going to run it straight ahead. And a first down for Alcorn at the 36-yard line. We'll give him the 35 now. And at that time, it was... Zarek Rollins Jr., the backup quarterback, more of a wildcat there, faked the pass to the left and ran it straight ahead for the first down. Yeah, that big offensive line that Alcorn State has right now, Tim, is really dominating the, the, the line of scrimmage there, and, and they're, they're doing a very good job of moving the football down the field. The lone back is Arnold Walker. Junior gives Junior, fakes the handoff, looks right over the middle, wide open to let George at the 15, down to the 14-yard line, and a first down for Alcorn. Nice fake and a rocket pass there by Gibbs Junior. As once again, that's the fifth catch already for to let George. No huddle attack. They set up a screen at the 12. And down to the eight-yard line and out of bounds right there. Yeah, Alcorn State will try to put you to sleep with the running game and then come back with the passing game. And uh, they really have very good skilled players. Jarvis Turner on the catch. Jerian Harris on the stop. Second down and five. No huddle attack. Hand off right side. Cut back at the five and down to the four-yard line. And it's going to be close to a first and goal here for Alcorn. They just don't give you any time to breathe as they... Bring in a wave of five and send five to the sidelines. Some fresh bodies. It's not as fast as, say, an organ, but at times it is. Two or three plays in a row, it's just rocket fire, and then they kind of settle in with a normal no-huddle attack. They're going to run it here third and short. Right side and close to the end zone. The ball's loose. That ball is out, and the Golden Lions, I believe they have it, and they do. The ball came out at the one-yard line. And for the Golden Lions coming up with that fumble was Giovanni Harvey. And that is the second drive in a row that the Alcorn State Braves have turned it over once in the end zone and the next at the two-yard line. Boy, you know they are just <laughs> feeling snake bit right now. Yeah, they are. And they're moving the football and getting, <laughs> getting within hmm. touchdown striking range and just put the football on, on the ground. That's uh, well, The Golden Lions got to feel pretty good. They've given up a lot of yardage. They only trail seven to three. Now, they can't be too careless here. They're backed up at about the one-yard line. There is a man down. Is that TQ Mims? 
It's slow to get up there and team already, boy, he's gingerly favoring that right leg area. Let's hope he's okay. That could be a big loss as he's really emerged. He really has. Mm. So here we go. First and 10 for the Golden Lions. They're going to have to go 99 yards to pay dirt. Handoff straight ahead, breaking a tackle. Young still fighting extra yardage up to the 10 as he picks up about nine yards there. Strong running. Boy, for a freshman, 220 pounds. He's a load coming at you. He, he really is. And like I say, he's, you know, he's out of Dollarway High School and, and very, very talented. And, and he walked onto this UAPB football team late. Handoff again, strong running, diving forward. And getting up to the 16-yard line that time was Draylon Willis, the freshman from Forest City. And a first down for UAPB. That gets them out of that hole down there. Now they can kind of settle in. Still got plenty of time before halftime. Hand off Young. Just bounces off the first guy. Pinballs his way up to the 21. And I love how he's always going forward as there is a flag down at the 32. Let's see what this flag is about. Clock at 3.04 before halftime. 7-3. Alcorn with the lead. UAPB with the ball here. Players it's going to be an illegal substitution. Had 12 players on the field. It's hard to move the football against 11 guys. When <laughs> you put that 12th guy there, it's extremely hard. But, Tim, I like the way the Golden Lions offensive line is firing off the football on this series. First down and five now. And movement. Golden Lions about to give that five right back. Full start. Going to get big Kenny Eagle on that one. So five yards up, five yards back, and we'll start it all over again. First and 10 from the 16. It's hard to miss Kenny Eagle also, 6'4", 305 pounds. He plays the right guard. He's a steady ball player for the Golden Lions. Yes, he is. Shotgun snap. Throwing it, Beverly's got it at the 27 and fighting for extra yardage down at the 31 yard line and a first down for UAPB. Anderson to Beverly and that was a big combination a year ago and they've yet to get some of the familiar names from a year ago. It's been some of the newcomers. It's been Kinsey and Bryant and Ferguson this year. Little misdirection, trying to set it up. Now running out of problems at the 25. He'll tuck it and run it. 35 out of bounds at the 37. Picks up seven yards and out of bounds with 217 on the clock. As that was a veteran move right there. And he's really just progressed so nicely in that quarterback position. He's not going to put up some of them crazy Bruce Eugene, Eric McNair yeah. numbers that we've seen in the past. But, boy, he is rock steady, makes good decisions. He really does. And he, that was a heady play. He took his lumps as a red straight, red straight freshman quarterback, but he's really improved. And off, lowering his helmet, driving forward close to the 40. Boy, look at him move the pile. Extra yardage, and that's probably going to be enough for a first down. Jeremiah Young, boy, I like the way this young man goes about his business. Yeah, I tell you what, this, this kid... Like I said, when you look at Walter Ashley, who's, who's in the ball game now, Jeremiah Young, Jamie Smith, Draylon Will, Will, Willis, those are a group of true freshman running backs who are going to be outstanding here for the Golden Lions. You're Lines. talking about third, fourth, and fifth on the depth chart at the beginning of the season. Yes. Shotgun snap, looking left, throwing, complete. Beverly again drags a brave to the 49-yard line of Alcorn and going to be very close to another first down. Clock is stopped at 129. And you really have to credit this drive too, Tim, to this offensive line because those guys are firing off the football and giving Ben Anderson the kind of time he needs to throw the football. Boy, fast moving first half here. Last week, oh, wow. we were just finishing up the first quarter. <laughs> Shotgun, one back, it's gonna be Young. Or check that, that's Ashley. Gonna go deep, he does have a man. Ferguson can't hold on to it. A little bit of contact at the 12. Underthrown a bit where Ferguson had to come back to it. If he would have led him a little bit more there, probably would have been six, but able to catch up because the ball was underthrown yeah. was Jamison Knox, but still Ferguson had it go off his shoulder pads, it looked like. He really did, and 
Young man yeah. out of New York. Boy, he had a catch last week that was just brilliant. Yeah. Laid too. out. It was. I had to go back and watch that one a couple of times. <laughs> it was sweet. Second down and ten from midfield. Looking left. Pump fake. Nowhere to go with it. Now a quick pass in the right flat to the 47-yard line to Dexter Bryant. He had his helmet ripped off, and now he's going to get a penalty for tossing the ball back too aggressively to the official. He was wanting a flag for face mask. They didn't call it, and then he kind of just flicked the ball back to the official, and the official didn't like how hard he tossed the ball back to him, and he's going to get an unsportsmanlike conduct here, and, boy, that's a tough break. Well, so sometimes... Mm. Well, see, Tim, sometimes uh, it goes back to your favorite Major League Baseball team, uh, Yadi Molina, the outstanding catcher for the St. Louis Cardinals. Sometimes you, 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 you might throw your helmet or throw the football down out of frustration, but you're really not trying to show up the officials. That's true. It's how they interpret it. Yeah. And the official felt like him tossing the ball back to him so aggressively was more so out of frustration because he didn't get the face mask penalty called. And that's going to cost you APB big time. So it's now third down and about 25, Carl, instead of third and about eight. Yeah, it looked like a promising drive. And now you don't want to leave too much time for Alcorn. They've shown the ability to move the ball quickly. 52 seconds left and a timeout called. And Alcorn does have all three timeouts left. You know, if you APB and you go in at halftime, you're down 7-3, you're okay with that. You know, like I say, you don't want to get this football back to Alcorn State because they have been into the red zone quite a bit of times but just kind of shot themselves in the foot. And you want to you want to keep it a, a one possession ball game going into halftime. The Gold Lions got to feel pretty good about this score, as you mentioned. A interception, two red zone turnovers, and deep red zone. I'm talking a pick in the end zone and then a fumble at the one yard line when it looked like the all corner running back was about to go in for a touchdown. Yeah, that's what it looked like. Fighting for extra yardage, and Giovanni Harvey recovered it at the one. I'll tell you what, John. Johnson, Clock's Johnson. moving here, Carl. UAPB probably content with just letting it go down a little bit. Going to throw it. Look out, blindsided. He's hit. Ball is loose. Kenny Eagle diving for it. It's going to be close on who's got it. I think Eagle was able to get on it. A flag is down, but blindsided. Didn't seem coming. And a personal foul here, face mask. So that's big, and UAPB is going to keep the football. Wow. It would have been fourth and about 35. Instead, automatic first down. You got three timeouts. All of a sudden, UAPB is living a little bit of a charmed <laughs> life here in the first half. You know, we're next to the Alcorn coaches booth, and they're about to go bananas with that team. I'm because. sure they've got to be very frustrated. They yeah. feel like they should be up 21-3 right now, and then plays like the one you just saw there instead of getting the ball back. Now that's going to give UAPB an automatic first down at their 44-yard line with 29 seconds left and three timeouts. UAPB still Check got that. a shot here. Yeah, two timeouts. Or two yeah. timeouts, rather. Now Alcorn's going to use one of their three timeouts here. With 29 seconds left, fans stay tuned at halftime, the M4. Set to perform once again. I do not see the Alcorn band here today. A little surprising. Yeah. One of the closer trips. Usually the six, seven, eight hour type trips. They you only see the home band, but for a three and a half hour, four to the max trip, uh, you usually see the visiting band. Well, you saw Alabama State. Last week. Well, they traveled the, the eight, <laughs> nine hour variety, didn't they? Montgomery's not a short drill. I guess, they, and they you, knew. You would know. They knew ESPN was in the house, and so they wanted to be well representative. And 
went back and watched that game later as it was tape delayed on ESPNU. Started about 9.30 and some of our fans were maybe thinking they could stay home and, and watch it on TV and uh, it started late, but it was fun to go back and watch uh, the, that thriller unfold, but I didn't like the ending of it. I hated the beginning of the movie and I hated the ending, but everything up in between was all UAPB. Yeah. With Golden Lions, they looked really good last week offensively. You know, once they got out of that first quarter funk there and, and they just put up some, some big time points and kind of, I, I want to say it kind of blew a nine point lead there in the fourth quarter, but. What did you see the numbers yeah. between yeah. Southern and Prairie View last oh, wow. week? 62-59 overtime. We'll talk more about that as the game goes on. Going to throw it here. Running out of problems to his right. Gets to the 40, 45 midfield and gain of about 12 and a first down for Ben Anderson using those legs. Again, just kind of takes note of the defense and doesn't force anything downfield. No, he doesn't. And really, Tim, you, you get the Golden Lions are able to pick up about another uh, 10 to 12 yards. They'll be in, in, in Tyler Strickland's uh, field goal range. 19 seconds remaining, two timeouts. UAPB at the Alcorn, 45 now. Shotgun snap here, Anderson looking left. We had Equid open, he missed him. Now he's gonna have to take it and eat it for no gain. Well, he wanted to throw it, but he had one of his linemen right in front of him as he got ready to throw it. It was a nice little fake out there by Equid. He did a hard fake like he was going to go out to the left, and then he cut back for a little post over the middle. And there was some room there to throw it, but Anderson just didn't have the, the room to get rid of it. No, he needed about another second there to kind of get the football off. And a big play here for the Golden Lions, and it's a good time out to call with 11.8 seconds to go. Not a good sign here as TQ Mims on crutches headed to the locker room right now. And... Boy, you hate to see that. He's got a big, his right knee is wrapped up in ice, and I hate to hate to see that. Yeah. He had a big interception. There's TQ there, headed to the locker room, and he's kind of walking off by himself. Yep. Boy, let's hope that's a precautionary injury. Anytime you see that knee wrapped up, you just hold your breath. So a second down and 10. 11.8 seconds remaining here before halftime. Ball spotted at the Alcorn 45. One timeout left for UAPB. Young the lone back, gonna throw it right. And caught, bobbled, and now stacked up and fighting. Now gonna have to use a timeout with three seconds left. Out of bounds, but they blew the whistle dead before he got out of bounds at the 40 yard line. So they traded about Eight seconds there for five yards. They're going to send Tyler Wilson to the ball. Tyler Strickland rolling to the ball game. Third down, and boy, this would be some be a long field goal be a UAPB record if he boots this one in. I don't know. Well, you tell me. Well, he tied the record last year with a 50 yarder. <laughs> Alabama State. Alabama State. Right so, down the middle. And this is going to be a 40. Yeah, this, is, a, no, this, is, this would definitely be beyond 50. Be about 57, probably. Right, I guess, why not? In the <laughs> half, just don't get it blocked, right? Yeah. We'll see what happens. Obviously, they must be feeling pretty good after that first field goal. Well, I've seen Tyler in practice kick him somewhere 55 yards, and, and so this is going to be a pretty long one here. Well, this is going for a school record and a timeout called by Alcorn. They got one left. Well, Tim, I'm going to talk a little bit about UAPB. One of the fastest growing programs at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff is the STEM Academy, which is a research and educational program funded by the National Science Foundation. STEM is designed to help increase the number of minority students majoring in the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics field. For information about the STEM Academy, contact 870-575-7112. And talk with Miss Taylor. She'll get you straight. Sounds like the plan to me. Yep. Gonna spot this off the right hash. Three seconds left before halftime. 
It's going to be a 57-yard attempt by Tyler Strickland looking for a school record field goal here. Good snap, good hold, and it is blocked. The ball's loose. This is dangerous. And a touchdown saving tackle by Damian Lee. Thank you. Damian. Damian. My gracious. That's what I was fearful of, or I believe that's Damian. Actually, 82, not 92, Carl. Similar hair. Braxton Hoof. <laughs> Thank you, Braxton. We're at halftime. Seven to three. Somehow, some way, the Golden Lions are down just seven to three. It could be a whole lot worse as they were able to get a couple of turnovers in the end zone and at the one yard line, and then they had a field goal blocked in which it was scooped and nearly returned for a touchdown on the last play of the first half. But as crazy as it was, you look up, it's seven to three. Well, it's time for the M4. I will turn it over to the marching musical machine of the Mid-South as we are at halftime, seven to three, Alcorn State leading UAPB here at intermission.
What's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just I, there was a I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, smoke key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. 
Welcome back here inside of Golden Lion Stadium. Tim Stubbs and Carl Wimper. As we are just about set for the second half here. Carl, seven to three our score at the half. UAPB dodged some bullets. It's been an evenly matched football game, Tim, and time of possession. Alcorn had the football 15 minutes and 31 seconds uh, compared to 14 minutes and 29 seconds for the Golden Lions. And uh, total yardage, UAPB had 190 versus 225 for Alcorn State. So, but. It didn't uh, have that feel, though. Yeah. As Alcorn spent the majority of their possession, time of possession, deep in UAPB territory and had two turnovers in the red zone. Blocked a field goal, tried to scoop and score before Hoof was able to extinguish that fire. So, you know, all things considered, it could have been as bad as 28 to three. It's seven to three. Yeah, you're right so about that. You know, and they've given UAPB, I guess a cat that's got nine lives, or how many does a lion have? <laughs> they've, they've used up about four or five of them already. Well, one thing I know Coach Copeland's not pleased with, they, the Golden Lions had uh, five penalties for 50 yards, and, and you know, it's half of 100. You don't want to kind of reduce the number of penalties that you get. And, but one penalty was that 15 yarder by uh, Dexter Brown when he kind of roughly tossed the football back to the official. Alcorn State is going to get this football to start the third quarter. Strickland just about set to kick it away here. He mentioned some of the numbers there for UAPB. Van Anderson, 8 of 14 for 86 yards. No touchdowns, no picks, one sack. Leading receiver was Dez Beverly, four catches for 35. C.J. Branch, two for 24. Ferguson, one for 25. And Dexter Bryant, one for just two yards. Jeremiah Young, 10 carries, 39 yards. Ben Anderson, nine for a net of 36. Leading rusher for Alcorn, 53 yards was Arnold Walker and Gibson Jr., nine of 11 for 108 and one touchdown. Here's the kickoff. Taken from the 15, trying to get to the edge, and Giovanni Harvey and company able to corral him at the 25, I believe, is where they're gonna mark him down there, and that was Jarvis Turner on the return for the Braves. They'll give him the, uh, let's see, yep, 25. So about as good as a touchback. So that's where we're gonna start. The second half here, Alcorn with the football. We're completely under the lights now as nightfall has set in. And now they added five more yards to the end of that kick there, and they're going to give them the 30-yard line. There was a flag on the field. I don't know what the flag was about, but whatever well, it was, it was five yards against UAPB. We'll see if the Golden Lions can get a three and out here. That'd be huge to start the second half. Man in motion. And Arnold Walker now looking to throw it. Gibbs Jr. all day to throw it. Going to throw it to Walker wide open in the left flat, but incomplete. Jerian Harris was there, but Walker would have had probably a first down with some space over here on the left side of the field, but Gibbs Jr. just kind of Fired put a little too much hot sauce on that one. A little too much mustard on Yes, sir. So 14-43, just underway. Early second half, third quarter. Second down and 10. Three to the right. Now a man in motion as they're tied in as he'll line up in the backfield. And they'll hand it off. No, nope, fake the handoff, throw it. Got a receiver open in the right flat. Quick strike, and he gets up to the 42 and a gain of 11 and a first down as Tavares Tavoris Doss. Kind of like a little option pass there by, by Gibbs. Just an, another variation of the run game, really. Get it out in the open space a lot quicker. Just a different look, a little something to think about. As if a defensive coordinator doesn't have <laughs> enough on his plate already. First and 10 from the 41. 
Have a pistol style formation here. Handoff straight ahead and then fighting for extra yardage at the 47. They had him stopped at the 45 and then an extra surge there at the end. He got a little help on the back side of that play and a gain of about six yards and going to bring up third down and or second down and four rather. Well, Walker's a powerful back, like I said, six feet, 225 pounds, and you know, he's built low to the ground, but he's a powerful back. Second down and four. Handoff, broken tackle, second level, 40, 35, up to the UAPB 30, cuts up at the 20, needs a block at the 15, the 10, the five, and touchdown, Alcorn State, Joe Price. And there were about four missed tackles on that play, Tim. Missed tackles, broken tackles, cutbacks, and some nice blocking upfield. And Joe Price takes it to the house. 50-plus yards on that touchdown run. And Alcorn State now leads 13-3 with 13-16 to play early third quarter. Extra point coming up here for Hayden McCraney. So UAPB had been doing a pretty good job of keeping them out of the end zone, but Alcorn State, Joe Price strikes for a huge run and hits pay dirt on a big time run and some missed tackles by UAPB and Alcorn State makes UAPB pay for it. We'll step aside, 14 to three Alcorn. They lead it 13-16 to play third quarter. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. Craney set to kick it away here as he knocks it deep. Back of the end zone, and it's going to be a touchback. Golden Lions will have it first and 10 at their own 25. 13-16 to go if you're just joining us. Early third quarter, 14-3 Alcorn State. Just took a 11-point lead. A long touchdown run by Joe Price. They had him stopped after about a five-yard gain in Missed tackle, broken tackle, call it what you will. And, and then he made some nifty moves in the open field and got some good blocking downfield and took it to the house. The Golden Lions are going to have to counter. Coming on late on the play here was DeAndre Curtis. Ben Anderson. Semi shotgun here to his right is Young. Young takes the handoff and gets a couple. And now he breaks off for a gain of three. They had him stopped and then he broke free and then went backwards and then went back for a gain of three. So well, he's a big back. One person's not going to bring him down. No. This, this kid is playing like he's an upperclassman. This is an important drive for the Golden Lions because you want to counter what Alcorn State just did, came out of the dressing room and tacked the touchdown on the scoreboard. And Movement off the left side there, Alcorn pointing to UAPB. They're pointing to Mikael Carter. But instead, they Tadra Pamplin, 6'2", 305, redshirt sophomore out of West Memphis. And he's the center. Maybe he moved the, the football, kind of flinched it or something, and it made him jump off sides. Second down and 12 now. Going to throw it. Looking left and incomplete. Had it for a quick second. I believe that was Dez Beverly. 
Had it for just a split second. Nice hit there by Alcorn State, knocking it loose. So third down and 12. The Golden Lions being challenged here. You know, you know, for UAPB, you, you, you really do want to pick up a first down because you don't want to put the center defense right back on the football field. Anderson steps up, trying to run it. Now he's going to throw it. Got a man complete at the 32, Dexter Bryant. He's going to be shy of the first down by a, a yard or two. Got upended. And Ben Anderson wanting to go for it here. Let's see if they will. It's going to be fourth and one on their own 34, and they're going to punt it. I think he thought smart. about it. And yeah, when you're on 34 with this much time left, I think that's, that's the right thing to do. That's the smart thing to do. I know you have the urge. There's a, a sense of urgency, and then there's desperate. I think they're more in the sense of urgency mode right now, but they are going to call a timeout, and if you're going to use a timeout this early, they may be rethinking going for it here. Wow. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to you. You know, during halftime, you know, obviously the Golden Lions made some adjustments defensively and offensively, but they're sending the offense back out on the field, Tim, and it's a... Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's, uh, gutsy. Gutsy, you know, with 11 minutes and 48 seconds to go in the third quarter. Wow. Yep, they're going to go for it, so here we go. Unless you, unless you try to do a hard count to draw them off sides. Fourth down and one. Ben Anderson under center. Going to hand it off to Jeremiah Young. He's got the first down, still driving, runs over the official. Knocks his hat off as he knocks him on his keister and first down UAPB. <laughs> but uh, the official is going to get credit for that tackle as Jeremiah Young was about to break free there, and he just well, I'll tell you what, ran him right over. The lead block that was by Kendrick Brown, the big senior out of the right guard out of, out of Whitehaven High School in Memphis. Going to throw it here, Carl. No huddle. Now going to run it midfield. A little spin move and kind of backpedals his way down to the Alcorn 49-yard line, a gain of eight on the quarterback scramble. 11.05 and counting, third quarter, 14-3 Alcorn. UAPB went for it, and fourth and one on their own 34. Well, these corner got it. These cornerbacks that Alcorn State has, uh, they, they're pretty nifty out there. And Young takes the handoff, gets to the 47, and he's going to bring up third and about a yard here. I mean, are you in four down territory? You know, sure. <laughs> if you went for it, if you went for it on your own 34, you'd definitely go for it in Alcorn territory close to midfield. That's my thinking. Well, the power third, back. Short. Let's let's go ahead and get the first down here. Got the power back in there from Earl High School, Michael Wilson. Straight ahead, he's got enough gain of two, maybe three. And a first down for the Golden Lions. So we'll revisit fourth down for another time. Had to move the chains. The Golden Lions definitely looking for their first touchdown. I'll tell you what, Isaiah Ferguson at the, Ferguson at the bottom of the radio dial is drawing one-on-one -on -one coverage to be an ideal time to go to him. Right side, cut back straight ahead, 30, 25, 20. See you later. To the house, Jeremiah Young takes it all the way for a 36-yard touchdown strike. And the Golden Lions are in pay dirt for the first time with 9.50 to play. Here in the third quarter, Jeremiah Young takes it all the way for a touchdown. I tell you, what, you got to credit Kenny Eagle, the, the guard there, that opened up a, uh, a pulling guard. He opened up a huge hole there and allowed uh, Jeremiah Young to 
to get that first step and then go into the end zone. Actually, it was on. It was a 46-yard touchdown, Carl. 46 yards out, and a yes, sir, for the Golden Lions there as they are oh, wow. they, in the yeah, end zone now. They got to call timeout to him. Are they going for two? I guess they're going to try to get it to a field goal game here. That's the second timeout. And they're going to have to waste a timeout in doing so. So they don't like that at all, but they're trying to get it to where it's a three-point game. If they go for two here. If you kick the extra point, which is still a lot of time left in the third to be breaking down those scenarios, but that's what they're thinking is. Get it to a... One position and make game. it 14 to 11. You're down by three, where if you kick the extra point, it's 14 to 10. So uh, they're going to try to go for two here to get within a field goal. 9.48 to go in the third. UAPB just scored. Both teams with big touchdown runs. The last one was by UAPB's freshman from Dalloway, Jeremiah Young, 46 yards out, right up the middle, really. Yeah, and 215 pounds, he is his speed, too. Yeah, he shed the initial line of scrimmage, got to that second level, and he took it to the house with no problem. They, they weren't even close to catching him as he broke away. So two-point conversion coming up here. Sprint right, Anderson, nowhere to go with it. Going to throw it back in the back of the end zone, and it would have been incomplete anyway, even if Beverly would have caught it because he was out of bounds. You can't come back and be the first one to catch it. If he could have thrown it back across the field, he did have somebody open, but just ran out of real estate and nowhere to go with it. So we'll step aside here with 9.48 to go in the third, 14 to 9. Hi. My name is Danny Andre Brill II, a senior here majoring in industrial technology, management, and applied engineering. I thought that I would be looking for a job at this point, but thanks to my mentor, Dr. Charles Colin and Career Services, I was able to obtain a position as an industrial engineer upon graduation. Danny worked hard in class from the beginning, obtaining three internships while on campus. UAPB can help prepare students like Danny for those same opportunities. UAPB prepared me. I'm big, I'm big, I'm big. I've done big things. Some even say I'm bigger than life. But you know what? There's nothing bigger than life. Not when someone you love is fighting to live. You want to do something big? You want to do something big? Sign up to donate marrow and save a life. Take the first step at bethematch.org. See how big you can be. You could be the one to save a life. Tyler Strickland set to kick it away here. 14 to nine. Alcorn State leading by five, 9.48 to go in the third. It's gonna be taken from the three yard line by Price, breaks the tackle, gets up to the 20, maybe the 21. Gain of about 19 there. By Joe Price, the young man who had a big touchdown run on the last possession for Alcorn, so both teams getting it done with their running game here in the third quarter with long touchdown runs. Yeah, it seems like uh, Alcorn State's really kind of kind of shut down that passing game because Ben Anderson really has to be able to uh, to connect with his favorite receivers downfield very much in this ball game. John Gibbs Jr., 6'6", sophomore quarterback out of Houston, Texas, takes the snap. Hand off, cut back, Williams the third up to the 30 yard line, a gain of about nine. They're gonna give him the 31 and enough for a first down. This no huddle attack here by Alcorn State. First down snap. And it's a pass in the back, almost like an option there, but instead he threw it. Yeah. Gibbs Jr. was hit pretty hard there by Jerian Harris. He wanted to pitch it. Instead, he threw the ball backwards. He's a little lateral uh, lateral pass there. So that, luckily for Alcorn, it went out of bounds. So that would have been a live football. Yeah, he threw Gil it behind the line of scrimmage. Gil was a little shaken up, and uh, Zirik, Zirik Rollins Jr. is coming in on this play here for he's a 6'2", 201 pound junior out of Houston. Second down, and that's why it's a loss of about five there. 
Handoff straight ahead, stacked up, nowhere to go, and a gain of maybe a yard or two, and that is all for Arnold Walker. That time it was Zarek Rollins, the backup quarterback, who came in there. He ran, he ran right, the running back ran right into Jerron Harris. So. so third down and 13 coming up now for Alcorn. And a big play after UAPB just got a, a score. They would love to get a stop here and get the football right back in their offense's hands who's starting to move the ball a lot better. Third and 13. Stepping up, hit as he throws it, wide open midfield and down at the 49 yard line and a first down is Tavoris Doss. Gibbs Jr. was hit right as he released the football but he found a wide open Doss over the middle and luckily he had to go to the ground after he caught it or he would have had all kinds of room to run. It was UAPB was coming in on a blitz. Got to him just a little too late. There's a little end around pitch as they tried to get it to Rollins Jr. But UAPB was looking for it. Is that Joel Green in there once again? He's had a pretty good ball game and a loss of about a yard and a half. Yeah, he's out of East Los Angeles Community College there. He's 6'2", 225 pounds a junior. Second down and 11, Gibbs Jr. Talking things over with his offensive line. Ball at the Alcorn 46. Arnold Walker motion to the right, looking left, throwing, dropped. At midfield, he had to let George open. And bring up third down and 11 here. This Golden Lion broadcast is sponsored in part by Arkansas A&M College Federal Credit Union. Arkansas Health Connector and the Wellness Center at Robert F. Moorhead Middle School. Third down and 11, 7.17 to go, third quarter. 14 to nine, Alcorn with the lead and the ball here. Looking right, going deep, dials it up and incomplete and just too much traffic over the middle as they were looking for Tavares Doss and as he kind of made his cut there, he kind of got tangled up with a UAPB defender, but it was kind of an incidental contact and Gilson, just really wasn't open. Gills was under quite a bit of duress from Joel Green. And Joel's been a pretty heads up ball player for the Golden Lions. A good defense is staying there by, by UAPB team. Andre Mitchell back deep. McCraney taking his time. Boy, look at the hang time on that kick. He booms one a mile high and a great catch <laughs> at the 10-yard line. Hold your breath. My heavens, if he was in Cowboy Stadium, he would have hit the scoreboard with that one. That Easily. thing was about light tower power. That thing was high off his foot. And first and 10 for the Golden Lions. They did their job, Carl. They get it back. 7-0-1 to go third quarter, down 14-9 with all things considered. You're right in the ball game, and with maybe another score here, you can take your first lead. You, know, it's, you just keep yeah. grinding away. So Anderson and company back. It's a flag on the field, Tim. It's going to be maybe a legal substitution. Oh, False start already. Didn't even seem like they had even gotten set yet. So. It's going to back them up, make it first and 15. Boy, you don't want to see that. You're already backed up to the 11. Now you're backed up to the six-yard line. I didn't see the penalty on, it was on. But it was a, uh, it's a false move. Going to throw it. Man open, big hit at the eight-yard line. Dexter Bryan on the catch. Yeah, this is the end of the field that you really have to be careful with the football team because when you're pretty much backed up in your own end zone, you don't want to do anything crazy with the football down here. And yeah, it's Cantu on the stop for Alcorn. Second down the 11, gain of four. Young, the lone back just to the left of Ben Anderson. Takes the snap, looks left again, and boy, how about that hit? Hello, how do you do? 
Cantu just gets smashed by Des Beverly. Just head on collision there. He caught it and just ran him right over and out of bounds. A gain of about seven and gonna bring up third and four. Cantu is gonna feel that tomorrow morning. He's a small guy, 5'8", 171 pounds, a junior. He's out of Beaumont, Texas. My goodness. Gonna throw it here, a little slant, and it's gonna be caught. 25, 30, 35, and down to the 37 yard line. A first down for the Golden Lions, and Des Beverly comes alive on the last two plays. Two big time receptions for Des Beverly out of Alexandria, Louisiana. Are you talking about a receiver who's polished? He's a very polished re receiver. Bad snap, and gonna have to eat it all the way back at the. 16 yard line and my gracious after two really nice plays and UAPB was starting to get it going and a bad snap and they're going to lose a whole ton of yardage car all the way back to about the 18 now you're looking at second down and goodness gracious what 30 lost over 20 yards on the play second down in a bunch Quarterback draw, nothing there. Now it's going to be third and forever. Just nothing there. You know, now uh, you know, third and forever looks like uh, you know, at times Alcorn State likes to blitz, and I'm sure they're going to bring the whole house on this play. They didn't, on the scoreboard, they don't even have how far it is to go. <laughs> That's when you know it's a long ways. So third and about 30, we'll call it that. Going deep, nearly picked, incomplete. Going up the right sideline, intended for Dexter Bryant at about the 40. Even if he would have caught it, it would have been maybe close to a first down. And on the punt it away. So it looked like a pretty good drive starting there. And all of a sudden, one bad snap later, and it just kills it. The drive just stalled. Mm. So Strickland on to kick it away here. Boy, it takes his time end over end. Lucky to get away with that as it rolls brilliantly all the way down to the Alcorn 29 yard line. Luckily, it seemed like it took forever to get that ball away. It's the first year Strickland is punting. Aaron Godwin was the punter the last couple years, did a fine job out of San Jose, California. Now we've got a young man out of Alpine, California. And got a nice end over end kick there down to the 29. So 423 to play here in the third. Alcorn gets it back. They lead UAPB 14 to 9. It's a fast moving third quarter. Kevin. The whole game, that first half was a blur compared to last week, which three hour and 45 minute game seemed to have taken eternity. Straight ahead, running room. Xavier Lofton on the stop, but not before a gain of about eight there on first down by Arnold Walker. Well, Alcorn State uh, lives and dies with that, that, that no whole offense. Second down and two coming up here. Walker will remain in the game in the backfield. Quarterback keeper and nowhere to go. Xavier Lofton, a great open field tackle. And a loss on the play. Back at the 37 yard line and loss of one brings up third down and three. Well, we haven't called Xavier Lawford's name too much this season, but you know, he's a heck of a football player, 5'10", 205 pound senior. He walked on three years ago out of J.J. McLean High School there in Lexington, Mississippi. Third and three. Gibbs Jr. takes the snap, 
Look out from behind. That ball's loose, and he's able to get back on it. Joel Green comes in from the blind side, hits the quarterback. Gibbs Jr. goes down. He fumbled it and was able to jump back on it as it didn't get too far away from him, but a loss of about eight on the play and forcing Alcorn State to punt it away, but another outstanding effort by Joel Green. 6'2", 225, junior out of Los Angeles, California, East LA Community College, and he's been a factor tonight. I tell you what, he came off of that defensive end position with blazing speed. Yes, Tim. sir. McCraney, another booming kick here. Andre Mitchell can return it. Fumbled it at the 15, loose UAPB luckily recovers it. That's My fun. heavens, at the 12 yard line. And it's these big booming kicks by McCraney deep. I don't know if he's losing it in the lights, but he is really getting some hang time and decided to return it, not fair catch it, because he did have a little bit of room to return it there, but got to catch it. Boy, those are <laughs> devastating if you fumble those, and luckily UAPB got it back. See what Mitchell is a sophomore. He's out of he's out of Citrus Hill High School there in Riverside, California, which is about 70 miles southeast of Los Angeles. And he comes from a football family. His uncle, Andre Proud, was a former NFL defensive back with the New York Jets. And off Jeremiah Young is trying to counter it back to the right there, but a nice tackle by Justin Williams of Alcorn with two minutes to go here in the third quarter. UAPB's got it. No gain on the play, second down and 10. At the Golden Line, 12. UAPB trailing by five, 14 to nine to Alcorn State. Here's Anderson, looks right. Now he's gonna run it, I believe, and he's hit as he throws it. Are they gonna call it a fumble? Looked like the arm may have been going forward there, but they're gonna call it a fumble. And there's a big pile up at the 17 yard line and UAPB again gets it back. So gonna be third down and about six coming up here, third and five. And that was dangerously close yeah. to being a forward pass there. Of course, could have used that replay booth this week as only had replay last week. Only for the TV games. Well, this is on TV, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> the national TV. Oh, mercy. Third and five. Anderson. Going to run it. Got room. Needs a block at the 30. Out of bounds at the 31. First down, but a flag is down at the 17. It's going to go back. I believe it's holding on the goal to line. Mm -mm -mm. Boy, those hurt. It's going to negate a gain of about 13. Mm. Pamplin again. Fifty-three seconds left here in the third, and instead of a first down at the thirty-one, it's going to be third down and long. Back inside your ten, down to the nine. Yeah, Pamplin, Pamplin six-two, three hundred and five pounds. He's a redshirt sophomore. He's out of West Memphis High School. Now another flag has come in as it's gotten sloppy here with the penalties in the third quarter. 44 seconds left in the quarter. 14 to nine. And the Gold Lions doing enough to stay in the ball game, but a couple of big penalties here. That's gonna back them up and now it's gonna be third down and 16. Third and about 17. 40 seconds and counting. Got to be careful back here. Now down inside to about the four yard line. Quarterback draw, trying to give him a little room maybe to punt it. Gets up to the 14 yard line, a gain of about 10. And that'll give him room to kick it. Good heads and up play there. It, it was. It may be the last play of the third quarter, however, as it's down to 14 seconds. And Strickland's on to kick it away, but he may not get this off before the quarter. It's a fast moving ball game tonight. And that will end the third quarter of play. A couple of touchdown runs for both teams early in the quarter, and 
We head to the fourth. 14 to nine, Alcorn leading UAPB. Fourth quarter coming up here from Golden Lion Stadium right after this timeout. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all working with United Way for a million little reasons, the kids of our communities, to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day. You see, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies showed the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor, and make a difference in the life of a child, for the life of that child. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org. Welcome back here in Gold Lion Stadium as Tyler Strickland set to punt it away here as we start the fourth quarter. Line drive kick, fair catch caught at the 49 by Tavoris Doss. So that's for Alcorn State. We'll take over. Fourteen to nine, our score. Still a one possession ball game, Tim, and you know, defense. Of the, the Golden Lions defense has, has stepped up, and the offense just can't get anything moving. John Gibbs Jr. back in a quarterback here. Fakes the handoff. Gibbs Jr. straight ahead over the 40, down to the 38. Gain of 11 and a first down for Alcorn. That little misdirection play is working pretty well. For Rare, rarely time. does he hand it off, and you just have to respect the fact that he might hand it off because as soon as you think the quarterback's going to just keep it, that's when he hands it off. UAPB's been penalized here 10 times for 78 yards. And Almost identical numbers if you look at all the, all the stats, except twice as many penalties. And maybe the difference in the game right now. First and 10. Alcorn. Going line 38, leading 14 to 9. Early fourth quarter. Going to throw it all day. Open and then dropped at the 25 yard line. Intended for it to Boris Doss. He had it stumbling to the ground and couldn't hold on to it before it fell incomplete. Uh, the UAPB defense is bringing pressure to the quarterback. And I say again, Tim, this, this defense has really, has really stepped up here in the, third, in the, in the second half. Second down and 10. Gold Lions in a 4-3. Hand off right side, and that gap closes quickly. Short gain, Xavier Lofton. And Willie Duncan, the third on the stop. Gain of three, third down and seven. That was Arnold Walker on the carry. Now back in the ball game is Joe Price. Price has the big play. A big third down here for the for UAPB defense. 13-40 and counting. Fourth quarter, 14-9. Big play, third and seven from the goal line, 35. Gibbs going to throw it. Quick strike over the middle in traffic, incomplete. Had it for a second, looking for... His tied in, Ladarian Davis. And Davis had it, but as he was coming to the ground, it was knocked loose and complete fourth and seven. It was a hard hit there by Antonio Jenkins. It looks like Alcorn State is in, wow, four down territory. This is strange here. Maybe a little too far, yes. too close. Uh, they don't want to kick it. You wanna, you wanna too far it. to kick it and a little too close to punt it, so but, they'll go for it. Fourth, the way UAPB's offense has been struggling, you would think they would punt the football and try to hit it inside the 10-yard line. 
Shotgun snap, fourth and seven. Over the middle, caught. First down at the 20, down to the 15. We'll mark him down at the 16. First down, all core, and they come up with a clutch. Fourth down, pass play. Tavares Doss over the middle for the first down. Well credit that offensive line for giving Gibbs the kind of protection he needed. No huddle attack. Gibbs a keep it at the 10. Makes a man miss down to the 7. Gain of 9. Fast pace. Boy, they just don't let you catch your breath. 13 minutes and counting. UAPB really needs to hold them to a field goal opportunity here. You keep it a one possession ball game if UAPB can hold them to a field goal. And then if you do that, that'll put them up by eight points. Eight, and then you're wishing you'd have kicked an extra point on that earlier touchdown. <laughs> now we're back to that again, right? Oh, yeah. But much rather hold them to three and deal with that than a touchdown. Handoff to the five, still driving. Gain of about two and enough for a first down. It's going to be first down and goal. Joe Price on the carry. And the Golden Lions are going to have to dig deep right here. Yeah, early in the ball game, Alcorn State got down in the red zone uh, twice. And this perhaps about the same the identical spot on the football field and coughed the ball up. If you're UAPB, you're looking for the same kind of results right about now. Handoff, Arnold Walker hit at the two, diving for the end zone. It's close. He's in. Touchdown, Braves. Second effort lunge there by Arnold Walker, the senior 225, running back out of Atlanta, Georgia. Ronald McNair High School was hit at the two, and he lunged forward at the last second and just broke the plane for an Alcorn State touchdown with 11.56 to go, and now they're up 20-9. And when you look back at that fourth down and seven, kept the drive alive. Yes. Extra point coming up here for McCraney. And the kick is good. So we will step aside with 11.56 to go. It's now 21-9 to Alcorn. And the Golden Lions are going to have to get it going as it's starting to get late here. And they're staring 0-4. Eyeball to eyeball. So we'll be back right after this timeout. Lead paint poisoning affects 1 million children today. If you're pregnant or have young children and your home was built before 1978, you could be at risk. Learn how to protect your family. To find your home's danger zones, the health effects, or just to find help, Log on to leadfreekids.org. Set to kick it away here, McCraney. Saw the scoreboard there, 11.56 to go, 21-9. Alcorn just tacked on a touchdown to go up by two scores. Kick deep and take it in the middle of the end zone. Walter Ashley uh, takes a knee there wisely. He wanted to return it. She seemed kind of <laughs> clap his hands there is itching to take one out, but he'll take it out to 25. And the Golden Lions have to get it going. Still time left, Carl, 21 to nine. A lot but of time. a sense of urgency, yeah. no question about it. There's a lot of time left in the ball game. And, and only one time yeah. out. They had to use two of them on an earlier drive. They did score off that drive. Here's Anderson, three wide to the left. They'll hand it off. Young running room into the second level, breaks a tackle at the 40, and he's down there. Gain of 15 yards for Jeremiah Young. Running the ball very well again tonight. Young goes over the 100-yard mark with that carry. Now 16 carries for a... 115 yards and a touchdown. Pump fake going deep. Up top looking for Des Beverly, and he's kind of ridden out of bounds. Yeah, it's a good kind of a little hip check there and just kind of forced him out of bounds. That was Jamison Knox on coverage. Yeah, Knox and Ken, too. Those, those are two, two very fine corners that all course State has. Second down and 10. 
Anderson steps up over the middle, crossing pattern complete. And Dexter Bryant gets to the 49, about a yard shy of the first. Let's see, they actually give him forward progress to the 50, so it is enough for a Golden Lion first down. They'll move the chains. Starting to find something there over the middle. Yeah, they are. 11, 10 and counting. UAPB down 21-9. Shotgun snap here, Anderson throws left wide open. Beverly again lowers his shoulder and a little extra. Curricular activity. <laughs> a little extra <laughs> after the play there, but Beverly didn't like how the Alcorn player wouldn't let go of his leg, so he just kind of just kind of shook him off. First down on the play into Alcorn territory. Now at the 38-yard line. Looking right, complete at the 34, and Ferguson then goes backwards. Yeah, They're going to give him forward progress at the 34, luckily. Gain of about three on the play. Oh, that's strange because he, Ferguson made a football move. Yeah, and it looked like because if he would have broke free and then got yardage, they would have given him that. So it's kind of a win-win situation if you give them both. Called a gain of four, second down and six. Movement again. Boy, that has just killed them tonight, Carl. The false starts, that's about the fifth false start tonight. Mm. And it's been a different player almost every time. It has been. Don't have a 73 on my roster here. You know, there are so many, you know, first year guys in that who's been thrown into the fire for UAPB, who's having to play a lot this season. Looking over the middle to Swain. He caught it. Had a man draped all over him and great wow. concentration. Cody Swain catches it for a big gain up to the 16-yard line and a first down for the Golden Lions. I don't know how Cody came over the football, but Cody is the kind of kid that you know, he's not the fastest player on the football team. But he's but, a good player. Yeah, but he knows the playbook very well. Stretch play to the left, down to the 14, gain of two. Boy, he had a Alcorn State Brave all over his back. As a matter of fact, I thought for a moment the ball might have been picked off. Yeah, it, it got in there a little late, but he kind of shielded his body, used his rear end there, if you will, and kind of stuck it out, and it kind of went right into the stomach of the, the safety there. With That safety was all over him as he caught it, and a very... Nice catch for Swain. Second down and eight. Pump fake to the left. Got a man wide open. Ferguson at the 12, the 10. Nice move at the five. Ferguson dives. End zone. Yes, sir. Touchdown, Golden Lions, Isaiah Ferguson. An outstanding move at the 10. And then he takes it in to pay dirt. And the Golden Lions have pulled a little bit closer. 9.07 to play. Fourth quarter, 21-15 now. How about that effort there by Isaiah Ferguson? Well, when you talk with, with running backs, with wide receiver coach Craig Ray, he's real high on Ferguson. Ferguson's 6'6", but he's a big target. But he has very good speed to go along with that size. He's about 210 pounds, but he, he runs a 4'5 and a 40, but he put a little juke move on, on the defender and got into the end zone. Extra point is good by Strickland with 9.07 to go. We'll step aside. UAPB counters. It only took them about two and a half minutes. That was important. 21-16 now. The Gold Lions right back in it with 9.07 to go. Fourth quarter as we go to break. Look at Isaiah Ferguson. Oh, what a move at the five. And yes, sir, touchdown Golden Lions back in just a moment. When you're on this team, you learn to never give up. Even if you're down, third string quarterback, clock ticking, hostile environment, exhausted, you can never lose hope. There are over 13 million people in the Horn of Africa affected by famine, war, and drought that are counting on us for help. More people affected than the population of New York City and Los Angeles combined. And we can't give up. Please go to this site and forward the facts about this crisis to everyone you know. Do more than donate. Forward the facts. Here's the kickoff and taken for a touchback in the end zone by Price. 
So Alcorn will take over here at their own 25, 9.07 to play. Now that quick strike offense, you wonder if they might use a little bit of clock as UAP's only got one timeout left and Alcorn leading by five with the football or will they keep the gas? Keep the metal to the... Yeah, keep the pedal, pedal to, to the, the metal, metal and uh, keep full throttle here. We'll see. They may change things up, but they may not. But a big touchdown drive by the going lines only took them about two and a half minutes. Capped off by if I'm, Isaiah Ferguson touchdown. If I'm all corn instead, I wouldn't change anything I'm doing because they've been moving the ball effectively. Williams the third, fake handoff. Gib, Gibbs up to the 28-yard line and slow to get up was Antonio Jenkins for UAPB, a gain of about four on the quarterback keeper there by Joe, or John Gibbs, Jr. Of course, Joe Gibbs uh, would be Monty Coleman's former head coach. <laughs> uh, look at TQ. Yeah, not a good sign there. I hate to see that. Great competitor. When you're out of your uniform on crutches, that's not a good sign. Nope, not at all. Second down and six. Fake the handoff again, one-on-one. -on -one. Jenkins and Gibbs, a big block, and Gibbs lowers his shoulder and gets the first down, and Jenkins is slow to get up at the 29-yard line. He took a pretty good shot there, and that's two plays in a row. You can tell he, he's playing with some kind of an injury and just trying to suck it up. Yeah, he really is. He's... He had him one-on-one -on -one out there and then took a, a nice little shot, nice block to free and spring uh, Gibbs for the first down. So it's first and 10 now for Alcorn at their own 36 yard line with 8.07 remaining here in the fourth quarter. 21 16, Alcorn by five. It's going to take a lot for Jenkins to come out this football game. He's a tough player. They'll spread them out here, and a, it's going to be a delay of game penalty unless they got a timeout in at the last second. And I believe they did. So. Now they're going to come tell the uh, head umpire that on the sideline over there, they got a timeout in just before the penalty. And Alcorn's going to. And that happens a lot. Yeah. And the referee nearest to the sideline usually hears it because he's right by the sideline that calls the timeout. Of course, the back judge doesn't know it, so he got to throw the penalty. Uh, the back judge is watching the play clock, and he threw the flag when the clock got down to zero. So that'll stop the clock at 7.53. Here in the fourth, 21-16, all Corn State. And the Golden Lions desperately need a stop here. They only have one timeout left. They're down five. Well, Tim, the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff offers the world's only undergraduate regulatory science degree program which prepares students for entry-level employment in four of the United States Department of Agriculture regulatory agencies, the Agriculture Marketing Services, the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Services, the Food Safety Inspection Services, and the Federal Grain Inspection Services. First and 10 coming up here from the 36. Handoff, Williams the third, he's going nowhere. In the backfield, outstanding open field tackle, Willie Duncan the third, and it's a battle of the thirds. I tell you what, Duncan is a true freshman, six feet, 215 pounds. He's out of Southfield High School there in Southfield, Michigan. In high school, Tim, he was a three-year starter at linebacker. He made all conference in each of those seasons. He's gonna be a, a good player in the future there for Golden Lions. Play action, Gibbs under pressure, throws incomplete at the 44-yard line. It was intended for Philando War, and it's going to bring up third down and about 12 here for the Braves, and it also stops the clock, important, with 7.15 to go. So well, Anthony Smith, the fine defense in for the Golden Lions, played that right defense in spot. He was, he was, he was really breathing down Gibbs' throat. Crowd starting to get into it here on third down and long. Play action, stepping up, Gibbs throws back over the middle, incomplete Antonio Jenkins. Dropped a would-be interception at midfield. He laid out for it, and he just missed from picking it off, and 
on to put it away as McCraney and Alcorn and UAPB will get it back as Andre Mitchell comes back out on the field here. The gold line defense did what they had to do and hardly a couple of minutes off the clock and that's it. So Alcorn, they decided to run their full offense and take no time off and now UAPB is going to have a, a real opportunity here, Carl, as another high wobbly kick, fair catch caught at the 20 and this time catching it with ease at the 20 is Andre Mitchell. So the Golden Lions have a a real good opportunity here. Seven minutes to go, one timeout. Timeout's really not a, a factor yet, but this is the drive that you need to get it done right here. It, you don't it, want to get much later than this. It really is because uh, they moved with a sense of urgency on that last drive and you can look for, you know, you can look for the, the freshman Jeremiah Young in terms of running the football, but if you're being honest in the way that Isaiah Ferguson does, Beverly, the way they're catching the football, you wouldn't hesitate by putting it in there after them. So first and 10. Gold Lions at their own 20. 80 yards away from taking the lead. Seven minutes to go, fourth quarter. Ben Anderson. Well, hand it off, a little bit of running room here into the next level, up to the 30, 31 yard line, gain of 11, and Jeremiah Young having his best night of his young career, the freshman out of Dollaway. Now over 120 yards in the game. And just think, Tim, he started the season as the fifth running back on the depth chart. Now he's number one. Rolling to his right, stepping up, running room here. Nice move, Anderson, 40, 45, look out, needs a block midfield. 35, 30, knocked forward all the way up to the 26-yard line. Gain of about 35 and a huge play. And is there a flag? There is, Carl. You can barely even see it. It's back at the 26. Oh, it's my the, goodness. It's always one of the nature of holding penalties. And it is way back on the play. Penalties have been the Achilles heel tonight for the Golden Lions. Over that, 10 penalties in the game. None bigger than that one right there. That negates a gain of over 40 yards on the carry, and that would have set them up in business for the go-ahead touchdown all the way up to the 26-yard line of Alcorn instead all the way back at the Golden Lion 21. Unbelievable. That is a massive penalty for UAPB. It was a heartbreaking mm. penalty. It was against Kittrick Brown, uh, the right guard for the Golden Lion. My, oh my. Boy, those hurt right there. First and 20 now. Hand off, straight ahead, Young again, just gashing the defense. Ground and pound up to the 36-yard line, and he gets back the penalty, then some, and went from first and 20 to second and six. Kaplan in the center made a heck of a block there. It sprung a hole for Jeremiah Young. High snap, handoff, Young again, right side, driving hard to the 40, close to the 41. It's going to be very close to a first down. Yeah, Jeremiah Young brings a load to him. And, you know, he's, he's listed 215 pounds, but he, he's powerful, very, very strong in the legs. Well, they don't measure much anymore, do they? No. Every time it's close to a first down, they automatically say first down. Yeah. In this case, I like it. But they used to measure a lot more. For some reason, we haven't seen that many lately. <laughs> First down, UAPB at the 41, so they get out of a little bit of a hole there with that penalty. Going to throw it, looking left, wants to go to Swain, now he's going to run it, tucks it at the 45, tries to get to the edge at the 50, out of bounds at the Alcorn 47, and a first down for the Golden Lions, and it's Ben Anderson again on the ground, and he's, I think he's just fixing his shoe there. He's, he's, he's shoe. not hurt, as Monty <laughs> Coleman was doubled over with him, and He'll be all right at the Alcorn 48. Well, the Golden Lions came right back after that brutal penalty. 4.55 and counting. First and 10 UAPB at the Alcorn 48. The Golden Lions showing a lot of resiliency here in the fourth. Going to throw it again. Anderson, look out, blind side. He gets hit, dials it up deep, up top. And it is caught, I believe, at the seven. Ferguson. 
It is caught first down and goal for UAPB and I believe that's Eckwood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Darius, I tell you what. Well, Darius Eckwood came up with an outstanding catch with a would-be tackler all over him. That's his first catch of the game, and you're talking about a kid who's loaded with talent. And the Darius, 6'1", 185 pounds, a red shirt senior out of Springdale, Arkansas. Boy, had some backside pressure there as he got rid of it. A timeout called. And then Eckwood fighting with Cantu. And Eckwood came up with a big time catch there. We'll see if, if we have that replay. Maybe we can show it again here during this timeout. But Anderson just got rid of it in the nick of time as he was about to get blindsided. Threw it up, jump ball. Eckwood won the battle. First and goal. They're going to mark him down at the eight. Well, Eckwood is a preseason all swag selection, I'm telling you. Now. But early in his career, Tim, early in his collegiate career, Eckwood just had a problem staying healthy. You know, Darius missed all of the 2011 season with just a nagging pulled hamstring muscle that he re injured during spring practice last year. But he's a good blocker, especially on the edges, but he runs very good players pass routes and he's on the NCAA football championship subdivision watch list and Tim to get on that list you've got to earn it. 436 to go. 21-16 Alcorn with the lead but the Golden Lions have a first and goal from the eight yard line. Both teams now with just one timeout remaining. And this is been another thriller, a little bit low, lower scoring than last week's shootout, but a great game nonetheless, and another game that's going to go down to the final moments, it appears. He really is, and the Golden Lions are making a last-minute substitution that Kendrick well, Brown Keith, is coming Keith out. Keith Brown came in and like the... Uh, the, the the ref uh, sending back to the sideline. So here we go, first down and goal from the eight, 4.36 to play. Golden Lions in business here, deep in all corn territory. They'll hand it off, stacked up at the six. Ball's loose at the last second, the ball came out out of nowhere. They never blew the plate dead, and they're gonna lose yardage back to the 15. Jeremiah Young was driving, but it, he was kind of stood up for two or three seconds, and all of a sudden, he must have got it stripped because that ball came flying out of that pile there. So a big loss on the play back to the 15, and it would have been a gain of maybe one or two, but instead now you're looking at second and goal from the 15. Yeah, he doesn't want to come out of the ball game too because uh, mm. Dray Draylon Willis came in, and Jeremiah really told him to go back. I've got it, but Willis is in the ball game. Second and goal from the 15, stepping up. Anderson looking left, going to throw it and incomplete at the goal line. Looking for Ferguson at the goal line and it's gonna bring up third down and goal from the 15 now. So, well that last second little fumble there and a loss of seven on the play, that was huge. So it would be a, a, a good time now to go with the halfback pass from <laughs> Jeremiah Young to, to a receiver. It was fourth down around this area last week where they dialed it up and hit C.J. Branch for a touchdown, but he's not in the game right now. Third and 15. Let's see if Ben Anderson can make something happen. Anderson steps up to his right, going to throw it, and dropped at the goal line in a diving effort to Beverly. And it's going to bring up fourth down. fourth down and goal from the 15. But you, you definitely don't want to kick a field goal. Yeah, a yeah. field goal would just get you to two, down by two, and then not a lot of time left and only one timeout. So, boy, how big was that fumble and loss of seven? Oh, my. They got to get in the end zone. It's not necessarily the ball game that they don't score. Boy, but your chances diminish big time. Fourth and 15. Anderson steps up, going to have to throw it, and he's hit at the five. Now, there was contact there. Bryant was hit, but the officials didn't want to call a penalty, but it looked like he was hit a little bit early. 
even if he catches it, he would have only gotten to the five yard line. So Alcorn's going crazy on the sideline as, as if they just won the game, but there's still 3.31 remaining. But the Golden Lions are gonna have to get the ball back. They squandered a golden opportunity, had first and goal from the eight and went backwards after that and had to go for it on fourth down and didn't make it. It's so, still a lot of time, Tim, 331. It, it you know, with, a, with one timeout in your pocket. Let's see if Alcorn State is going to be conservative and keep the football on the ground. Still a lot of time, but my goodness gracious. Boy, he just had a great chance right there and just didn't capitalize on it. First and 10 now, Alcorn with it at their own 15. It's Gibbs Jr., same play, boy. We've seen that tonight about 15, 20 different times. Straight ahead and a gain of about seven. This time UAPB is really you know, going for the football, the, the strip drill, I'm trying to strip that football. Clock will run, 3.06 and counting. Second down and three. They're going to take their time now. This is something they're not used to right here. 15 on the play clock. Golden Lions with one timeout left. Trying to hang on to it. Really need to stop them. Boy, a first down would hurt. Hand off. Bouncing off one man up close to the 25. That's going to be very close to a first down. Is it looks, looks like he's about a, a yard shadow, Tim. Walker on the carry. He's going to bring up third down and third and one, a little bit less than one. We'll call it third down and one, 225 and counting. Boy, a, a fumbled snap, <laughs> broken play, something for a loss here would be huge. It may just quarterback sneak it with Gibbs. They do hand it off, and it is going to be a loss or no gain. Loses a half yard. They hand it to the fullback, surprisingly. I wonder if UAPB is going to call that last time out. Yeah, I think you have to call it now. It's going to be fourth down. And was that Goss again in the backfield? Troy, Troy Goss. Well, he slimmed down a little bit. And he makes a great play and just what we asked for. And a little surprising there. They hand it off to the fullback. Thought maybe they would quarterback sneak it. And it's going to be fourth and fourth and a solid yard here. Yeah, Alcorn State's going to have to punt the football. But 1 Troy, 56 to go. Troy Goss, I tell you, like I say, he, he started every game since his true freshman season. He's a junior. You know, he came out of a very good high school program in Shallow Christian there in Spring, Springdale, Arkansas, and he helped Shallow Christian win three straight state championships. In his senior year, Tim, Shallow Christian was ranked number five in the country. You have to see Troy. His smile is worth seeing. If you think Magic Johnson has a smile, you need to see Troy Goss smile. <laughs> That's saying something now. <laughs> he has a smile on him. Fourth down and one. And it looks like they're going to go for it, or they're going to try to get UAPB to jump off sides. They've been penalty prone tonight. And that's my guess is they're going to try to get them to jump off sides here. They snap it. Hand off. Straight ahead. First down and probably the ball game. What a gutsy move wow. by Alcorn. They roll the dice on the road at inside their own 25 on fourth and one with two minutes to go. And they actually run a play and get the first down. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot of guts to you. Guts, and it paid off. They gambled, and a flag has come in here. 138 left, and that's probably going to do it. It's uh, they, well, they, UAPB had the wrong person. Yeah. They put all their chips on the table. And they rolled the dice, and, and they're going to come away with the win because of it. But, man, that is a gutsy move. Not many coaches make that call right there. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. It looks like that. Oh, wow, it's just. <laughs> What's well, back-to-back brutal losses for UAPB to start conference play? Both at home. Both games, they had chances to win, and then just heartbreak city. UAPB trying to time the snap there and. Calls a fumble, but 
One minute left. There's no timeouts. A couple of more snaps, and this one's going to be over. So uh, another bitter defeat for Monty Coleman and his staff. Going to fall to 0-4, 0-2 in conference play, and could very easily be 2-0 in conference play. This one hurts. But you got to keep moving on. They'll have a bye week, maybe get a few players back by the time they play at Jackson State, a rematch of last year's SWAC championship game. Victory formation, and that's going to do it. Both teams on the field, and Alcorn's got a little chant going on the sideline, and it's been a while since they beat UAPB. Yeah, it has been a while. The old lines have dominated this series over the last decade. That's the ball game. 21-16, Alcorn. They win it on the road here at UAPB. The Golden Lions, another bitter, heartbreaking loss in which they had many chances to win it. They had a first and goal from the eight-yard line with four minutes to go, and they couldn't get in the end zone. And Alcorn State with 149 left. They go for it on their own 25, fourth and one. Knowing UAPB was out of timeouts, they went for it, got the first down, and then three victory formations later, Alcorn State wins it here on the road at UAPB 21 to 16. You can hear the dejection in my voice. Frustrating loss, partner. The Golden Lions have seen better days, fast moving ball game, but 0 and 4, 0 and 2. It is what it is. You got to go back and try to get some guys healthy, go into the bye week, maybe get a few more players eligibility-wise back on the field, whatever it may be. Try to rally the troops, and uh, Monty Coleman and his staff, they got their work cut out for them. Well, the Golden Lions are shorthanded. They're missing some of their key ball players, and, and, and you can see that the UAP really needs those ball players, but you you got to go forward what you have uh, to play with. And, but on the bright side, that you, you still like the way uh, a couple weeks ago how the young freshman Jamie Smith ran the football, the young freshman out of Camden, Arkansas. And, and you like the way Jeremiah Young on last week and tonight, and, you know, he went well over 120 yards on the ground. So that's that, that's an outstanding performance. So you, you can look at those two positives there. Yeah, Jeremiah Young was the truth tonight. No doubt about it, had a great game. Over 130 yards rushing on the night and a touchdown, but boy, this one hurts. The Golden Lions are going to have to try to heal up and go back at it at Jackson State on October the 5th. Got a little bit of a break here before they're back at it and still a lot of season left. 0-2 in conference. Just can't lose anymore, really. Going to have to go on a streak, but it starts with one, and right now 0-4, 0-2 on the season. For Finley Hill back in the studio and for all of our crew here. I'm Tim Stubbs along with Carl Wimper as we wrap things up. From Golden Lion Stadium, Alcorn State wins it over UAPB by a final score of 21 to 16. So long and good night from Golden Lion Stadium. <laughs>